Hi, my name is Brad Bray. I'd like to show you uh, some of the thought process that went into the design of the hot mesh chair, our first ever indoor outdoor piece. So I've got three mock-ups over here I can show you, so come this way and we'll take a look. So we got three mock-ups that more or less represent the progression of the design. The first mock-up here you see is obviously completely different than the final design. Uh, we wanted to be a little different in our approach and use square tube uh, instead of round tube, which presented a whole new level of difficulty trying to make the bends when you start from here and then come back all the way around. The profiles wouldn't line up. The squares would be out of alignment if you think about it. So we decided to move away from arms and go to round tube just from a, a simplicity of manufacturing. And then also that kind of opened up a whole new language because there are some cafe chairs that have been around since the 1800s. You've probably seen them everywhere. They're made out of steam bent wood. And I've always loved those things and it's fascinating that they've been around so long. So the more I thought about that chair, the more I, I we came across the, the final design where you have these two interlocking loops, which if you squint, you can imagine that, that bent wood chair that I'm talking about that you probably have seen. But this is a completely different uh, interpretation of it. So with these two mock-ups, we refined that shape further. You might be able to tell from this prototype to that prototype, we lowered the back a little bit, changed some geometry here and there. But what we were trying to do with this one is, is work out if this surface would be comfortable uh, as essentially a, a curved plane without really any complicated tooling. Because uh, we did want the chair to be very inexpensive if you have a six for your house or if you wanted to have 16 for an outdoor cafe. We wanted to have a very reasonably priced chair for that. So um, once we got the geometry down, we kind of explored further the idea of the mesh. And we looked at weaving at first because we wanted to bring some natural warm materials into the design, which is not something, was well, not a commonly used material in, in our lineup. And we, we liked where that was going, but the, the bulk of the weaving uh, obscured the shape of the chair. It took away some of the airy transparency that we wanted to have. And we didn't like the way when the weaving wrapped around the frame of the chair it made this very thick. So we, we moved away from that and decided to do a steel mesh that we could apply just to the top surface of the chair as a skin to keep the whole thing more light and transparent. So we looked at you know, various degrees of open and closed, you know, light versus massive, and this is just too industrial. Other, other common patterns are, are way too resin. This, this looks like a radiator cover from the 1950s. So we decided while that sort of has its place as some sort of historical motif, it really wasn't what we wanted. So we designed a pattern that had the best of all these worlds that was, that was our own that looked kind of woven, but it was not. So we had a, um, an architecture firm next door use their laser cutting machine to create some samples of some mesh. And we just used mock-ups and guesses to figure out what the scale of the mesh should be to properly support your weight. And uh, if you were sitting on this in the summertime and you're in the shorts on, we didn't want you to have waffle butt too bad. So we decided that this would be the right, right size in terms of, of scale for the, the design, durability, practicality, etc. So once we got all those details worked out, uh, the response to the chair was really good. We, we introduced it uh, two years ago, I think, and people wanted to see a bar stool and a counter stool and more colors. Uh, and right now we're also working on a, uh, a round cafe table to round out the set. So we wanted to bring some, well, an extra layer of personality back into it, so we added some bright colors to the line. Um, and as far as picking colors, we just looked around at 
we do a little bit of trend analysis, but we try not to be too trendy because it will be off trend next year. But uh, we picked up just some colors that we didn't have in the line and then tried to soften them up a little bit so they would be not so garish because we didn't want the colors to be too bright and too juvenile. So we tried to go for bright yet sophisticated colors.